we are going to be talking all about is the economy killing sustainability? And what does that actually mean? And what are all of the different facets behind that? I'm Jacqueline Rodriguez, your host. And join me each week as we explore wellness, sustainability, and business success. Everything from attracting conscious clients to adopting eco-friendly practices. We're going to cover it all to elevate your salon business. So welcome again, my beautiful guests, Kate and Lindsay. Please introduce yourselves. I'm Kate from Dip. We make solid hair care that's available in salons, uh, surf shops, and zero waste stores. And I'm Lindsay from Plain Products, and we do uh, personal care in reusable, refillable containers. Everything from retail to working with great salons and refill shops around the country, um, we provide bulk so people can come refill them themselves. And both of you and your products are so amazing. And we have had this series going on for quite a few months now. And this is just another really great topic that I don't think enough people are talking about. So I would love to hear your take on what do you think is happening because of the economy to the greater thing of sustainability? Who's going to start? Lindsay? <laughs> sure. I mean, I guess my take is that when the economy tightens, it's not enough to just be doing good. I mean, you can't sort of assume that just because you're doing good things that people are going to choose you. you. You have to still make the case and provide the education of how it does make sense in the longer term. So for instance, you know, our prices are higher than some other shampoos, but you know, it's wonderful ingredients. It actually lasts a really long time because they're super dense and nutrient rich. So you can make them last, you know, and you're doing good. So I think that some people think, oh, I'm, I'm doing good stuff. People will come in and find me. And the more things tighten, I think the less that is true. And also I think people are a little more stressed, so they're not looking as much. I mean, they just sort of fall back into old habits and just you know, do what's easy. So I think both of those things mean you have to make, make your case even more in, in these times. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we, we make products that last a very, very long time and that was intentional. Um, and you know, it's the dip happens to be something that is very affordable when, um, when you're at the point like that breaking point where you just can't shell out for Orbe or Purology once a month anymore. But I think that there's also this other piece that's happening where people associate sustainability with more expensive always. And then that when things are happening, like mass layoffs that we're seeing, like just ac across the country, like month after month, these announcements, people are less willing to take risks on sustainable products, um, especially if they've been burned by bad ones before that cost them a lot of money, you know, mm -hmm. and it's irrational for people to, to, you know, kind of put sustainability aside when they're shopping by price. I agree. And I, <clears throat> excuse me, I think there's so much to be said with, you know, especially when you said that it's, they've been burned before, because that is a thing that we have to deal with, regardless of the economy or not, we're always kind of backpedaling to try to make, make up for these other companies, right? So keeping that in mind, but I think as the, the economy is changing and people are having layoffs, I still think it's really, really important that there are people out there who want to keep going, but it is that education piece and it's learning how to maybe change your habits versus just completely stopping and reversing back into old habits, right? So okay. for us, especially because we see people coming in for colors less, they don't mm -hmm. want to buy as much shampoo. So as a salon, we are having to shift the way that we do things. And we have real conversations with our clients of, okay, I understand right now you can't spend X, Y, Z. So this is a good plan. Here are a few options as to like what we can do, lower your cost, stretch out your appointments and do things like that it's in our best interest to help support our clients to do that instead of them completely stopping and not coming back in um, or going to just 
color their hair at home and then they have a whole nother mess at home and then we're having to fix it later and it ends up costing them more. Mm -hmm. And then one of the other things that we're doing is the refill option because with our clients, yeah, maybe they don't have enough to buy, you know, our, our products away is they're expensive. It is the higher end, Mm -hmm. but now we have an option to just come in and get a few ounces, what you need right now, or you can buy larger bulk bulk and it costs less for you. And then you, it has longer and we offer then dip and we offer plain and we offer these different price points and having the education behind it and talking to our clients as to it's okay to change. It's okay to change your beauty plan. It doesn't mean forever. It just means for right now. Um, I think that's a really big key part in when the economy is changing. Don't panic as a business owner. You just get to shift a little bit. I think, I think, go ahead. <laughs> I think what's really beautiful about refilling that you touched on is that you really only need to pay for what you need. Um, you, you literally pay for what you get. There's no bottle sitting in your shower for eons. And so refilling, especially making it accessible like that in salons is so smart. I agree. And I think probably there's a lot of specialty products that you use once a week or once a month. And, you know, so you end up having that bottle for a year. So to be, to be able to go and just get a bit is a huge difference. But yeah. the other thing that I was thinking as you were saying all of that is, not only having those conversations with clients, but also as a business owner, having that, that thought of stepping back, investing in the business, like looking at all your costs, looking at, at how you're marketing, looking at all your things and deciding where those priorities are and how you're going to refocus and thinking a little bit more strategically about it um, instead of just also just doing same, 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 same and hoping for a different result is also really key right now. And I think to that point, um, as a business owner, it's really cool. We have this opportunity to, okay, you, you see the economy and you see where people are are cutting corners with, with costs. There's opportunity for us to use that to, um, to celebrate repeat customers. So I think there's there's opportunity there where people normally, you know, I, I have cheaper competitors and sometimes people switch to, to other bars and then usually they come back and they comes with like a little apology note, but if I was able to keep that person um, and figure out a way to celebrate them as a customer. Like, I think there's opportunity as business owners to do that. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. I think that's the, the key, sorry, Lindsay, uh, mm. behind what value you're putting with your business, right? So in this scenario where the economy is getting harder, people are spending less or coming in less, what value points can you put to your service that doesn't cost you a ton, right? Because we have to keep our costs down too. The fact is everything's going up for everyone, including the business owner, including each one of the products. So we do have to keep things in mind, but there are so many little things that you can do that create such value for your clients that even if they're stretching apart, like maybe they're coming in a little less, but they're going to stay with you because Mm -hmm. of the value, the mission that you have and, you know, how you actually take care of them. One of the things that we did the tiniest little thing. We put a heating pad on the shampoo bowl, uh, like when they're laying there at the shampoo bowl, everyone's raving about it. Even (laughs) on the hotter days, it's like, it's so nice because it just like soothes your back. And when you're laying there and you're getting toner or you have to lay there for a little longer, it's just a nice little touch. And that literally does not cost us, but the one time like $20, right? And it adds so much value to the client. That is a key key component when you're looking at how you're structuring your services, how you're putting together your products, what you're offering them. And that's going to help in any economy and how you make people feel when they're there too. It, and this is just popped in my head, but how you have these conversations of when they do have to lower, you know, or stretch out their appointments, or maybe they have to like, you know, change their color routine. How you have these conversations are critical 
because you're either going to make them feel alienated and feel like crap because they can't afford it or they can't come in. And that's a fast way to have them not come back to your salon. But if you have conversations and have different plans for them, then they know that they're safe and they don't feel alienated. They don't feel like less of a person Mm -hmm. to be able to have these conversations and then keep coming back because you put their needs first over making money. Absolutely. My relationship with my stylist is so sacred, (laughs) like, you know, (laughs) but, but if there, if, if she approached a conversation like that with, um, and and I know that she would with, with, um, I guess empathy, I would, I would be sold for life. I already am sold for life because her services are so great, but like, you know, but I have been in that situation where like, you know, I've been going to salons for a long time now. And there've been times when I've departed a salon just because of the shame of not being able to afford things the way I used to be able to. And, you know, in those moments of your life, it's just, it's easier to just like run away than it is to like tell your stylist, like, Hey, I can't do this anymore. Um, and please don't get mad at me because I had to box die like three times between, (laughs) between visits, you know, um, it's really important that that, and especially just for stylists to know that this is like what is happening. I mean, you can kind of read the room because I'm sure people are coming in less and asking for, for, um, hair color that takes longer between services to, Mm -hmm. to redo. But I mean, I'm sure everyone's feeling it, but like, I think a lot of people, they go to the salon to like pretend that they're still the same way that they were before. I tried to do it when I didn't have any money. I will try and still get the same services. And like the reality was I couldn't really afford it. And it would like, it like ached to not be able to do the same things I always used to do with my hair. Yeah. And having that option and knowing that it's not forever, Mm -hmm. just for that time period makes people feel much better. And then also Like I literally just had this conversation with one of my clients in the salon and it was, she was putting box dye on and we had a conversation about what the color was and what was the best option for her at home. And then we were able to actually just shift a few things in her services. So now she doesn't have to have the stress of box dyeing it. Her cost overall cost is going to be lower. And we just moved things around for her. So she felt so much better and doesn't have that like, oh, I got to run away and not come back to the salon because I feel, um, you know, ashamed because that's the whole market. Like everybody has these crazy ideas of what we're thinking behind the chair. Now I can only speak for myself, right? I would never care so much more about the money than about the person anyway. And unfortunately, there are stylists out there that it is just all about money. So when you come to me anyway, you're getting a whole different vibe. But (laughs) for so many stylists, like I know a ton of them that they really, we care about our clients. Sometimes it's awkward for us to say something just as awkward it is for the the client. So Mm -hmm kind of bridging that gap and having those, you know, conversations. So whether you're the client and you're not sure how to bring it up, just be honest, like come in and say, look, the economy, I I don't have it right now. I don't want to leave. What are my options? Is there something else that we can do that would cost a little bit less, but still, you know, give me some sort of style that I can work through. And then the client, I mean, the stylist really have those hard conversations and give them a few different options, let them choose. And if they say they can't do any of them, then that's okay too. Well, certainly, I mean, even if it does come down to money, the cost of acquiring a new customer so much higher Mm -hmm. than than making a few adjustments and losing a little bit of money to keep someone. I mean, you you should look at it the way that you're looking at it about the relationship, but even if you're going to go to just the financial side, it yeah. still makes a ton of sense to take a small hit um, and keep someone over the long term than try and find somebody to replace that customer.
I don't make products, so I'm just guessing on this, right? <laughs> but it, even if it's like just a little tweak, that's just by, you know, a big batch and. Right. I, I mean, I'm. Well, certainly, like I, said, I, I mean, when I'm you talking. have natural ingredients, you know, there are variations like our aloe, mm -hmm. the color varies between yeah. clear and yellow, just depending on the, you know, all of the, all of the things that go into growing plants. So yeah, we see some variations, but Certainly for me, I mean, I think I always have to just remind myself, like, it's so easy to go defensive mm -hmm. and to remember to be like, this is not personal. This is, this is about, you know, and to do the research and to meet people where they are, instead of just being like, no, you're wrong. It's good. Like, <laughs> like, um, is, is always hard, but, but important. Yeah. And this feels very much like a conversation we've had about keeping up customer service. And it, it's, important. So I love that we're hitting back on it, especially in this conversation of sustainability, because this is what people are going to be left with, right? This is whether you're giving them a good part and like feeling about sustainability or not. So the, especially in this type of economy, like where are we going with that and how, how we treat people is going to change how they feel about being sustainable, about buying other sustainable products and all of that. So this is just a very important topic that I don't think we can ever talk enough about is how to treat your clients and how to, you know, protect yourself because that is a thing too. Mm -hmm. And also make sure that everything's follow through with your clients and that you hear and you're open and your understanding and not just immediately defensive because it's very easy to do that. And I mean, I think we all see that, you know, there's the, the surveys that come out that say, oh, people are willing to pay more for green crop products or people, you know, want sustainable products. And I think that is true, but it's not, I think, enough to just be green or sustainable. No. I mean, I think you still have to, it's, still has to be great. You still have to have great customer service. You still have to be, you know, you still have to do all the things. And then with that on top of it, sometimes that can give you a bit of an edge over someone else, but certainly it's not enough to just kind of be like, no, we're green people. Don't worry. People come find us. They say they want it. Um, <laughs> I just, I I'm starting, you know, I'm starting to see a shift in consumers um, where they don't have the same disposable income that they used to have. And so they're like much more picky about where they shop. And when I say picky, like it sometimes doesn't even mean like sustain there, you know, sustainable has kind of gone out the window where they're like, okay, like if I can find this thing on Amazon that I can actually get on Temu, like, you know, they're going to go, they're going to justify buying the much cheaper thing from, from overseas. And, and I, you know, as much as it hurts me, like I forgive them for that because of, of, um, you know, just the state of everyone's like jobs right now. I don't know whether you see like, I, I don't know whether you've seen it that much, but I see a lot of discourse online where people are like, why would I pay more for something that I can get overseas? Yeah, I've seen a few. Well, and here's the thing about that, right? We don't know what we're actually getting from mm -hmm. overseas. So Agreed. again, it goes back to education because I had clients, there was two situations not that long ago. One person bought a Dyson and I'm not a Dyson affiliate. I don't, you know, I don't sell them, but she bought the air wrap on Amazon. Loved it. Few, like, I don't know, six or seven months into it, it completely died. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there and I'm, I told her, I'm like, message Dyson. They are great customer service. Like they have helped me so many times. Like that's why I am a Dyson hard, uh, die hard because every single time I need something, their customer service is amazing. And the product also is amazing. Amazing. So I told her that she's having these problems. They're like giving her the runaround. She sends it in. Anyway, this long story, she fi finally figures out Dyson won't help her because it was a knockoff, <laughs> right? So sad. she yeah. spent 500, almost $600 on an air wrap from Dyson 
it wasn't actually a Dyson product. So then now she's out all of this money. And of course, Dyson can't do anything. They didn't, you know, she she didn't shop with them. Mm -hmm. So that's such a big thing where you see a much lower price or you see like such convenience, like shopping just on Amazon. And trust me, I shop on Amazon. So it's not like I'm against completely Amazon. There's a lot of things I don't love, but you have to know what's happening. So yes, it came from overseas. It was a knockoff. She spent just as much money. I think she had like a rebate or something she was able to use. So that's why she used it there. But she ended up having to spend the exact same amount of money and get it from Dyson because we don't always know. So if it's not a trusted vendor. And and who could blame her, right? Like who could blame her for doing that? And that's, that's kind of the point. It's like, you know, it's, it's people are trying to do anything they can to save money right now. And it's so justified. And then you see like, and then, and then they end up getting scammed like crazy. And it's almost like, remember, I don't know if you guys remember in the nineties or all these like weight loss pills and stuff. It's like the same kind of thing, but with like consumer goods, it's crazy. It's just, a, it's scam city. And, it is. Uh, but I think it's also one of those cases of, you know, sometimes if it seems too good to be true, like it exactly. probably is too good to be yeah. true, you know, instead of, uh, so something like, instead of wondering why this is so expensive, maybe ponder, why is this so cheap? Like, yeah. <laughs> what had to happen for this to cost what it costs? Probably not, probably not good things. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But that's all going to come from education because where yeah. are they going to learn any of that from? That's why people are getting scammed left and right is because they don't think about that because that's not something that is out there readily available to like know what's happening behind the scenes or to look at these things, right? Mm -hmm. That's where as salon leaders or product leaders, I feel like it's our job to educate our clients and let them know you can do whatever you want. If you want to buy it again, I'm not even a Dyson, like I don't sell them. So it wasn't my thing at all. But even though that wasn't me selling anything, it's my job to help support my clients and show them. Like if I would have seen what she was buying ahead of time, I would have been able to catch her and tell her like, let's not do this, (laughs) you know? (laughs) But I had another client who bought Away from Amazon and it was much cheaper. And she came in for a cut and she was like, I don't know if I like the products. And I'm like, oh, which ones? Like, let's figure this out because maybe you're using too much or not enough. You know, there's all all types of reasons as to why it might not be working for you. And um, she was telling me that she got it off Amazon. She brought it back in. The bottles looked the same. The product inside the bottles were completely different. It wasn't the same product, but it was sold at a much lower price. Mm -hmm. And that's why it wasn't working, of course, you know? So then she's thinking like that always not a great, great um, product when really it was a complete knockoff, right? So this is why the education is so important. And then what I did, because she couldn't afford the full bottle, I had the option of here, let's just give you a few ounces for right now until you need more and we can work this out, right? So you can get the product that you thought you were getting and then don't order the these products off of Amazon. <laughs> like they're not, they're not supposed to be on there. And obviously they're not supposed to be sold even if it is a real pl- product on there, but also there's fakes out there and it's this whole scam thing. Yeah. I mean, you wear your hair every day. You should buy, you should buy from people that, that really stand behind their products. And I know like that temptation to buy stuff off Amazon, I think it gets us all, it seduces us all. And I don't, I think Amazon is like great. Cause I, there's certain things in my town I can't, I can't get, you know, so yeah. there's no shame in using it, but when it becomes like, I don't know if you start, yeah, I guess it's, it goes back to like, if you see things that are too good to be true, it's, mm-hmm. it's, tough, you know? Well, and when it comes to Amazon or any other product, do your research. Mm -hmm. When you're on Amazon, go up to the store that's selling it. Yeah. At that store. If it's not the store of 
Owe or the store of Dyson or whatever the brand is, I don't Don't suggest buying it. No. If it's their store and you can tell like all of their stuff is there, it's their store, then yeah, because there are some products out there that are amazing and they only sell on Amazon. Mm -hmm. So again, it's not Amazon that's at fault for this. It is the people who sell on Amazon and you have to just be wary of what you're buying and is it an actual real thing regardless of price? Like, cause there might be a sale, but you got to look deeper into it. So what's your favorite, I'm going to ask this to both of you. What's your favorite, um, money saving sustainable swap? Ooh. That was a good one. Um, I, because I'm in my makeup room right now, I love the little makeup rounds, not having um, the wipes, the disposable Mm -hmm. wipes. Yeah. It's, you buy it one time, you throw it in the wash. They're not always the most beautiful once you've taken makeup off with them and everything, Mm -hmm. but it's saving you money. It's saving the planet from throwing a bunch of disposable things in it out. It's also, you know, you're not using a bunch of chemical things. So you don't know what's in those disposable ones sometimes. So that would be my favorite, I think right now, or the one that at least I'm seeing right here in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Lindsay? Yeah. Um, what comes to mind is, is my leaf razor. And it's mm-hmm. one of those that it's pricier up front. But when you have those other disposable ones, the, you know, the, the razor up front is cheap, but the blades are incredibly expensive to keep yeah. refilling. Whereas this is like once a more expensive razor, but then you're just buying razor blades to refill yeah. it. And so like, that's, that's nothing. Yeah, so it's I, kind of the, the flip flop, but yeah. I love my leaf razor so much. I did a, a thing where I bought a bunch from, from Adam at leaf and gifted them to our customers last yeah. year. Oh, like, I, was like, I was like, I know you guys aren't going to buy this for yourselves, but I'll buy it for you. Like, just here you go. Cause it's one of those swaps that is like so great and it's beautiful. Like it's a beautiful product. They are beautiful products, but I mean, it's kind of what we were talking about back in the beginning of like, you just do the math and all of a sudden it makes a ton of sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, but if you don't do the math, just, just looking at it face value, it doesn't always make sense. I, I would say my favorite money saving swap, if you guys do a lot of cooking, um, our refill store sells spices by the Ooh. ounce and they don't, spices don't weigh anything, but like, if you get like a little jar of, I don't know, say paprika or cumin, yeah. right? Like it's kind of pricey, but if you, if you go to the refill store, it's like, it comes to like pennies. Like it's, it's like 70 cents to like refill um, it's because the, the actual paprika and stuff doesn't weigh that much. So if you cook, um, it, and you have a refill store by you, it's like two conditions that are very specific <laughs> and that refill store happens to do spices. Um, it is, it's really, really great. Uh, also I'll talk eat. about like not buying what you need. I mean, there's totally. nothing worse than buying a giant jar of something expensive and then just watching it harden over time as yeah. you get it back to whatever I mean, it was. I got- I have one dish that needs like hot Hungarian, like smoked paprika. Like I don't need the big, the big no. thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, oh, too late. Missed it. Yeah. That so, is yeah. amazing. Go ahead. Yeah, that, one's a, that one's a big, big, um, if you cook a lot, it, you end up saving so much. And I, I am very grateful for that. I love that. And I have seen online at, um, what is it? What is that? Thrive Market? where yep. they sell the bigger ones and it comes in, you know, a pouch versus a big, you know, glass jar or whatever. And it's awesome. much more affordable because again, like you said, it doesn't weigh a ton, but when you're paying for the whole brand new package, and this is the same with like, you know, getting plain uh, mm-hmm. body wash or lotion from somebody there instead of buying it all brand new like that is a way more affordable and it saves you so much money um I think that this is where like the sustainability part of it there's it saves so much more money 
if you look and you break down the different prices, but then when you are looking face value, and you already said this, Lindsay, but if you look face value and I wish there was somewhere that had like the breakdown for people. Mm -hmm. I I've created some with the products that we use, but I've created a breakdown of how much per ounce for the products that we use. But if there was somewhere we could go on and like look at the difference and have the price price breakdown, it would help. I think in the, the long run of being able to see how much it's actually costing you, um, over a lifetime too. Yeah, totally. <clears throat> Sorry. <That's okay>. uh, <laughs> I feel like I went on a total like weird rant there. <laughs> no, but, it's good. It's good for people to compare the cost per ounce. I think it's really important, but just don't look at dip because it's like not liquid. So that ounce, is, the cost per ounce is high. <laughs> yeah. But also taking the cost per ounce, that's different. I mean, right. leaf, you know, razor, you're not looking at per ounce, but you can look at over time. Yeah. How long your bars last compared to another bar or mm -hmm. to another, you know, um, even to liquids, like there's all sorts of different ways to look at this, but I wish there was a, a way that we could break down some of these and like start. And maybe that's what we do in our own business is break down some of these costs and show the lifetime value. And we show what really is behind it and how much you can save over time or per ounce or whatever your product is. I think maybe that's a really good way for every business to start showcasing and educating on what the difference is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I, I think with sustainability and with the economy, I, I still feel like there's a huge push for sustainability and clean products. Consumers do want that. I think we just have to build on all of these different values, build on more than just the face value of it, but truly what else are they getting? And then start thinking differently about how we're marketing, how we're talking to our clients about it and, you know, have some compassion for people who are going through a hard time and not take it personal. Perfect wrap up. Perfect. Do you guys want to bring anything else or say anything else about the topic or we're, I think we've said a lot. <laughs> yeah, I think we've said a lot. And I think that, um, I think people just want to know that are like as business owners, all of us, like, you know, we're not like these evil uh, monopoly men. Like we're, we're like empathetic to what is going on out there. And sometimes we're, we're okay with, you know, bending a little bit for a really great customer, a really great client to make sure that they can continue using products, even if they are a little bit priced out of reach. Yeah. And I do think there's a lot of people out there who aren't going through hard times. Like, mm -hmm. so I don't think we should assume that everybody's going through a hard time. Like, let's sure. take a look at it. What problems come across your desk that day? Take care of it. Speak with empathy and care and realize that the better you take care of your client, the longer they'll stay. Also, they'll tell more people about you and they may have five or six or 10 friends who are going to come on board because of the experience that you've given them. So there's a lot of different ways to look at it, but I, you know, just like with any economy and when things get hard, you, yes, there's a hardship, but then there's a lot of people who aren't going through that. And we can really just take a look from a heart centered place versus, um, you know, it just being all about money or stress. Don't stress yourself out about it. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. Well, I think I owe oh, well, thank you so much for being on today and um, let us know in the comments what you are struggling with. What, you know, what have you seen in the economy and what is your biggest struggle there so that we can help you and support you on that journey as well. And thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to the Salon Owner's Holistic Blueprint. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to follow and subscribe. Until next time, stay inspired, stay passionate, and keep thriving in the world of holistic beauty.